Edwin, another great video. You know I love all your subject matter. Another aspect to consider, aside from sensual overexcitability, is the concept of imagination. It's been said that your largest sex organ is your brain. That's because up to 80% of an individual's sexual arousal can be initiated through fantasy. Fantasy, of course, is a visual form of imagination, which to me is a form of intelligence and creativeness. I myself can experience a form of hyperphantasia, which allows me to imagine sexual encounters incorporating many senses, sight, sound, smell, etc., without external stimuli. Many of my more intelligent slash gifted friends can also do something very similar. This is just another facet of human sexuality with intelligent slash gifted people. Thanks again for this video. Thank you for this comment. I love it. And it made me wonder, are gifted people more imaginative than non-gifted people? If yes. Why is that? And what does imagination look like in a gifted mind? Let's get some answers. 1. Are gifted people more imaginative than non-gifted people? In a study published in the journal Gifted Child Quarterly around the year 2000, Thomas Oakland at the University of Florida tested 1,554 gifted and non-gifted students between the ages of 8 and 17 to determine whether temperament style separated children who excel in school from average children. Using the Student Styles Questionnaire, a 69-question test of temperament style available to counselors across the U.S., researchers determined students' preferences in one of two temperament dimensions in four categories, practical imaginative, thinking feeling, organized flexible, and extroversion introversion. The study's most significant finding was that gifted students are 29% more likely to be imaginative than non-gifted students. The difference was even more apparent in female students. Gifted girls are 55% more likely to prefer an imaginative style. 2. What does imagination look like in a gifted mind? Imagination operates either as a free play of the mind or as focused, purposeful activity. The degree of absorption in the imagined experience is important because for a gifted person, it can be so complete that all the senses are fully engaged. For this reason, it's called imaginal because it can be experienced as real in a gifted mind. The first component is visualization. One 17-year-old boy said, I can visualize very precisely. I do visualize a tube with a sort of narrative along with the visuals. Real events are like a photograph. I can dissect and examine at length what happened in seconds. I enjoy visualizing imaginary events because I have control over the small details. If I imagine a person, for instance, I can see the eyes, their color, size, etc. Everything. I've had the same experiences when I, for instance, when I, for instance, wrote my novel, You're My All, I saw every scene play out in front of me on the screen of my mind and all I had to do was write down what I saw. The second component of imagination is absorption. And an example of absorption in an imagined experience is this quote from a 13-year-old girl. She said, I can visualize pretty well. Sometimes it seems like I can touch what I'm thinking about. I can definitely experience this too. 
A simple example is that I can close my eyes and imagine eating a peach. I see its colors, I hear how I take a bite, I can smell its sweetness, taste its sweetness, and I touch it with my hands so I feel how soft it feels. Yes, all the five senses, so the five senses participate in the imagination here. That's what the component absorption means. When all five senses participate, the experience becomes as real as real. The sensations, so all these sensations are created internally while the outside input, so while outside input, so I should say it like this. All the sensations are created internally while the outside input is partially or completely shut off. The same girl said, I imagine myself riding a strong, huge white horse on a beach, cantering full speed, riding so close to the ocean that the water splashes my face as the horse runs. Images are generated in the sensory cortex. In excellent imaginers and gifted people are excellent imaginers. So in excellent imaginers, sensory areas become as active as in actual experience in outer reality. 3. What are the signs of a gifted person's rich and original imagination? Children and us adults with excitable imagination tend to produce interesting images and metaphors. We tend to ask what if questions, which are more about possibilities than about how things work. When we're kids, we love fantasy play. We love fantasy play and inventing stories because of our rich imagination. Some gifted children are happy or thrilled to play by themselves for hours. Many children have invisible friends, but gifted children tend to have more of them. I had a lot of them, for instance, who all lived in their own separate dimension. Moreover, some children assume the character of an animal or an object, for example, Peter Ustinov, as a boy, used to become a car. I became a horse, a mermaid, a flower, a lion, and an eagle. When I was in character, I often refused to answer the human speech and resisted being called out of my alternate existence. Children need their own private space, both physical and imagined. Some invent elaborate worlds of their own. I did that. My worlds were realistic to me, but I'm sure others found them unusual and weird. When I, a gifted person, was a kid, I became absorbed in my inner reality. As a result, I faced the criticism of spacing out. But I preferred my own way to organize my memory, make designs, and test my inventions, etc. I preferred to learn by discovery, and that fit poorly in a regimented school day. And finally, four, why are gifted people more imaginative than non-gifted people? I'm sure having a high IQ has something to do with it. And it also, again, most definitely comes down to overexcitability. As I said in my last video, more gifted people have overexcitabilities than non-gifted people. And in the case of imagination, it's all about imaginational overexcitability. Children with imaginational overexcitability have a rich imaginative life 
they often prefer to reality. If they are introverted, they can be completely happy to focus on their own inner world. But if they are extroverted, they might focus or yeah, yeah. If they are extroverted, they might focus on engaging others in their own dramatic ideas, painting the imagery world they live in. There you have it. This information came from these websites. You'll find these links below this video. If you found this video interesting, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment in the comment section below. Subscribe to my channel and watch this series from the start. In two weeks, I will be back with a new video in my series on untold Swedish history. Till then, I only want to say three things. Thank you for watching. Take care and bye for now.